Holding daf, today's daf is vav. We're going to start from daf. You dial it on the base. Brand new Mishnah. Naftali, you ruined it for me. What? You ruined it for me. Now every time I look at these, Reb Naftali, a chashav magichir, says that this looks like a football play. No, I'm. This is for you. Now, now I'm, I'm contaminated. This looks like a football play. <laughs> To Naftali, this, that's what it reminds me. Fine. <laughs> Rabbi Isai, here's what's going on. Very simple, we've got to move forward. You have, again, the players are Ruben and Leah. The green is Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> this is a deep route. The, the, all, the, all the English guys here, which is the right, they have no idea what we're talking about. Fine. Anyways. <laughs> Ruben is the quarterback. Uh, fine. So Ruben is married to Dina. Dina came from a, a usher relationship of Leah and Lavan. Leah is Ruben's mother-in-law now. And now, Lavan happens to be Lavan. Lavan is Leah's father. And then Leah had a relationship with Lavan, and now came Dina. And then, Ruben married Dina, Leah went ahead and uh, married Ruben's son. Ruben's son, this is uh, Chamoisoy, Chamoisoy, his mother-in-law. Leah is Dina's, we're trying to, the, the main point in this chart is to figure out how is Leah, who's Ruben's mother-in-law, also Ruben's wife's sister. How is Leah, who's Dina's mother, also her sister? Because Lavan, who's Leah's father, had a relationship with Leah and now came Dina. So she's her mother and her sister. So then everything else is as we had yesterday. So we have a case of Chamoisoy. Leah is Ruben's mother-in-law because he married Leah's daughter. Leah is also Ruben's uh, Kala, daughter-in-law. She's the main point is that she's Achoy Sishtoy. Leah, who happens to be Ruben's mother-in-law, is also Dina's sister because of this relationship that happened there. And then, of course, she's Aishas Ach because Leah went ahead and married Shimon, who's Ruben's brother. Then she married Ruben's uncle, so she's Aishas Achiroviv. The same thing. And then she's Aishas Sish, and then she's Anida. Total of seven. We don't have to be, we don't need a shaykh for now, minion. No? Okay, so that's that. Weiter, says the Mishnah. Habal chamoisoi, it's possible to be with your mother-in-law and your chayev also, chayev alayhi mishum chamoisoi, v'kalosoi, v'eshes ochev, v'eshes achiyoviv, v'achois ishtoi. That's the main point. How do you get to achois ishtoi? How could a mother-in-law also be your wife's sister? That's the trick. V'eshes ish v'nido. V'chein abo al eim chomev. Aim Chomiv. Here's Aim Chomiv. Aim Chomiv. These are all generations. This is the grandmother, Chava, who had Leah, who had Lavan. The grandmother and grandson had a relationship, an illegal relationship. Maybe it was Beshagig even. Illicit. Illicit relationship. And now came Dina. And Ruve married Dina. So now, Lavan. She's the granddaughter of a grandson. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ruve married Dina, who's not a granddaughter. She's a, a daughter of Lavan. And also, the, 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 the granddaughter of Leah. Because Leah, Lavan is, is, a, is a kid of Leah. It goes like this. Chava, Leah, Lavan. These are grandmother, child, grandchild. And the grandchild and the grandmother had a kid. So Leah is the, is the saft of Dina. So now if Ruvain is with Leah, and that's what happens here. Those are the two players again. Ruvain is with Leah. 
So it happens to be that Leah is the mother of Reuben's father-in-law. Who's Reuben's father-in-law? Lavan. Reuben is married to Dina. Dina is Lavan's. So this is Aim Chomiv. She is the mother of the father-in-law. And then you had all the other stuff. You have Moshe, the, the, son, the son, and then Shimon, the brother, and Achi Aviv, and the Eishasish, and the Nida. Bechein, and then the same exact thing, but slightly different. Instead of Lovin being a grandchild, Lovin is the grandfather. It goes, Lovin had Leah, who had Dina. We're just switching on a keva for, for, from the Zachar. And then the grandfather and the granddaughter had a child, Serach. So now it's the same thing. Ruvain is with Leah, who happens to be Ruvain's mother of a daughter-in-law, of a Aim Chamoisai. Who's, who's Ruvain's mother-in-law? Dina. This is the mother-in-law, and this is her mother. So now Leah is his mother-in-law's mother, and his mother-in-law's Eshesach, uh, and Eshesachiv, and all that other stuff. Rabbi Yochanan How's it possible, Rabbi Yisai? Here's a riddle. How's it possible that you are with one woman who happens to be your mother-in-law, and the mother of your mother-in-law, and also the mother of your father-in-law? How's that possible? Like this. This is not. A, this is a different type of play. You have two people that had a bunch of. You had three children. Chava and Lavan had three children. And Ruvain ended up marrying one from each family. He married a granddaughter, two granddaughters. Obviously, you have to marry a woman. So he married two granddaughters. But this granddaughter is a daughter of a son of Lavan. And this granddaughter is a daughter of a daughter. So like that, Chava happens to be... Who's, if, if Ruvain marries your Chavit over here, who's his mother-in-law? One step up. Who's his mother-in-law's mother... That's Chava. And you know, take this guy over here. He married Sarah. Who's his mother-in-law? I'm sorry, his father-in-law? Usher. Who's his father-in-law's mother? Also the same woman, Chava. And he also married one generation up. He married Rachel. So now his real mother-in-law is Chava. But Chava, as we said, is also his mother-in-law's mother and his father-in-law's mother. So how many Chatois are you Chayv on that? Because they're all mother-in-laws. She's a mother-in-law, a mother of a mother-in-law, and a mother of a father-in-law. She's so, the same person. She, yeah, she's the same person. So what? We had the whole Mishnah, she's the same person in the Chayv 7. Some of them are Eishas Sach and Eishas Achivi of Aviv and Nida and Eishas Sach. Chayv a bunch of Chatois. Says Rebbe, over here we have a Machloikas. Over here we have a Machloikas, why? Because Rebbe Echim Benuri says, if that woman is his mother-in-law and also in the mother-in-law's mother, in the father-in-law's mother, if you look in the pasuk, it says in the pasuk all three in one shot. You can ask questions, but we're not going to ask questions today. It says you can't be with your mother-in-law. Oh, this is the wrong one. I thought I printed out the other one. Chaval. Okay. The end of the pasuk, three words later, it says zimohi. I did. It. I left it on my printer. Okay. We'll have to remember zimohi. That the gemara at the end says that it tells us to all three. But I call upon him. It says all three have various in one shot. So the so so the other tana says it's considered one avera. Ellie, you love when the gemara does that. What part? The gemara prints out the pasuk. <laughs> Thank you. That's why I did it. And then I said, no, nah, but you guys don't like it. So I printed it out. I left that at home. Fine. Omer Rebbe Lozo, Omer Rebbe Shaya, Rebbe Yochin, Rebbe Nuri, Vesumchus, Omer Dabechot, Gevaldik. We're all going to remember this case. Sumchus. Going back to Chulin, the Oisav is Benoi. There's an Isser to Shecht, a mother and her offspring in one day. In one day. What about a mother and her granddaughter? No problem. Here's the case. I don't know if you remember this chart from Chulan. I was able to find the Baruch Hashem. You're allowed to shecht her and her in one day. You cannot shecht her and her, nor can you shecht the middle guy with the bottom guy. These are mother and daughter, mother and daughter. 
So ask the Gemara, what happens if a guy shechs number one and number three in one day, no iser. And then he goes ahead and shechs number two. Now you should be chayiv two times. Because as you shech number two, you shechted oisir zbinoi two and three, and oisir zbinoi one and two. What's the halacha? Says Sumchus. Rabbi is the one who says that you chayiv on each mother-in-law, a mother-in-law, and the mother of a mother-in-law, and the mother and father-in-law. Shachto ve'ezbaz bito. He shechted one and three. V'achikach shochad ez bito. And then he shechted number two. Soifig is harboim. You only get 40 malkis. You only over one. You did one maisa. Sumcha soimim mishum rebi meir. Soifig shmoinim. Beautiful. It's much the same thing. He took one action with one swipe of the knife. He's over on, on behemer number one and behemer number three. And that's like... Uh, being Mizana with, uh, with a mother-in-law who's also a number one, she's an Eim Chamev, and a number three, Eim Chamaisai. Omer Rava, Dimelohi. Maybe I can make a distinction. The You want, I can take this off. Yeah, each one of these women has another name. Halachically, one is a mother-in-law, one is a mother-in-law's uh, mother and a mother-in-law's father. Yeah? Oy vey, now I just lost my spot. Masha'in came by cows. Look, they don't have a different name. They're all the same exact thing. This I need. What's with the seat? Something up with the seat. The, who, uh, the guy has to make a balagan here. He went on vacation or something. He told me he's not coming today. They're all the same. They don't have a, a grandmother name or anything. You don't have different names. So maybe you have one, maybe. Maybe Riachan and Benuri would admit in this case that you have one. I can tell you a different Look, they're different bodies. Each one is different bad. But over here, the different mother-in-laws, one is a mother, mother-in-law, the different things. That's why the Torah says, Shareheno Zimohi, Akos of Asan Lakul and Zimo Achas. At the end of that Pasuk, it's the Torah says they're all considered one. Now, really, if you have time, you should look into it because it's very hard to understand what the Gemara just said. Because in fact, they're very, very similar. When you, when you shecht the middle cow, it's one goof, and you're being over different isurim from the goofim that are next to it. Just like when you're with one mother-in-law, you're over on different isurim from uh, Aim Chamev. It's very, very similar. The Achorinim go into different pshatim, Ayin Cham. You should look in the Ar Sameach. He has a very good pshat. Amar Kiva. So now, the following Mishnayis, are questions that Rabbi Kiva asked his friends, and until uh, today's Mishnah, so are going to be the same friends. Rabbi Kiva asked Rabbi Shua and Rabbi Gamliel as they were going to buy a, uh, an animal for Rabbi Gamliel's son's wedding. Unusual what? Unusual yeah. To oh yeah, the whole yeah the whole structure is interesting, and there's a back and forth. It's it's a different type of Mishnah. You're right. Omer Rabbi Kiva, Shalti's Rabbi Gamliel, Ves Rabbi Yeshua, Be Itlas Shel Eimum. We actually had a similar thing just recently in Chulin, a different Shaila, also in the same exact situation. It was the same place. They were going to the same place. Shalchu Likach Behema Lili Mishta Benoish Rabbi Gamliel. I remember when I was learning it then, I was wondering what's the difference, what they were doing, who cares what they were doing. But it seems like that was my own little shot. I don't know if it's true. Even though they were going to buy an animal and they were involved and they were in the marketplace, they're still talking and learning. That's what I got out of it. Everybody could get something else oh, out of that's it. That's what they said, Shab. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Over here on the spot? Yeah, yeah. I did not see it. Okay. Givaldic, who says it? Givaldic. That's funny, because I did, I did even, look for it in the art school. Okay. Even when you're busy with your customer, they still <coughs> Okay. Very good. <laughs> so, Pashat. Pashat Shah. Okay. <laughs> what, our Taisvis? I don't, I don't. Oh, shall we show you through the Mayoisim Atayra? Okay, so maybe it wasn't my shot. Maybe I stole it from the, in that sugi in Chulin. Okay, Givaldik. 
So again, so since Tosis says it's Kedai to say it like with the back tzainer, Tosis says the, the reason why the Mishnah says all these extra words, what they were doing and where they were going, Lohidiyah Shivchan, Sha'af Abi Shayu Trudim, Hoy Oiskim Bedivri Torah. Amazing. Habo Alachoisoi, Valachois Ove, Valachoisimoi. So what's the question? The question is this is actually a very good riddle. And uh, we really should get to the Gemara, but the riddle is. How is it possible to be with your sister who happens to be your father's sister and your mother's sister? Think about it. It's very difficult to come up with. You're with a woman who's your own sister and she's your father and mother's sister. It's unbelievable. It's not blah, blah, blah. Eh, she's the daughter of this. Think about it. It's a riddle. Challenge somebody to come up with the answer because if you start saying that somebody had you and had your sister, then that person is not your mother. You, how can your mother be your sister and your father be your... You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll see in the Gemara how it works. If, if you, this is the case if you try to come up with it by yourself. Yeah. Why can't your mother be your sister? She could, but how is she also your father's sister? And then they... She's also your mother's sister, also your father's sister, and she's your sister. Mao. Chayev. So, you could also read it that this person was over with three different women. The Gemara is going to explain that that's not what we're talking about. But that could be one shot. Number one. And then five minutes later, Mao. But we did hear something similar. He had one in awareness, and all five of his women wore nidos. So let's jump into the Gemara to see what the Kavachim is, what the case is to begin with. If it's simply as stated word for word, what's the question? He was first with his mother, with his sister, then he was with his mother's sister, and then he was with his father's sister. It happens to be that the same, he's with one woman who happens to be his mother, his sister, and his father's sister. They have different names. But they're the same exact person. It was one Mesa. Is this the same case as Rabbi question. Over there, no. Over there, it's in the same Pasuk. The Isra is in the same Pasuk. Over here, it's different Pesukim. It has one name, it's one Isra Nido. Even though they're separate people. What's the Kavachim? Even though it's one name. Even though it's one name. It's different, different Averis. Certainly, she should be Chayev three. It was five individual women, five wives. Over here, it's one woman. That's online. This is for sure on there. I saw it in the with my own eye. Check under Krisus, Daftas Vav, it's there. I didn't put it there, Ruven did, but it's, it's there. It's there. I saw it. I showed it to, actually, I showed it to Noam last night on, on uh, OneDrive. So you need a special policy to say, What's the case? That's step number one. Eliphaz went and had a relationship with his own mother. And from that relationship, they had two daughters. Then he went along and he had a, a relationship with one of his sister's daughter, slash daughter. With one of his daughters that happened to be his sister. Because they came from Let's call her Rachel. His daddy had a kid, a Russia, the son of a Russia, because he's a Russia. It's a sister because... And Rivka's his mother. Esau and Rivka had a kid, Eliphaz. So who's Eliphaz's mother? Rivka. Then he had, he had a relationship with his own mother. So anything coming out of that mother is his sister. 
But it's also his daughter because he's the father. So he's, it's his sister and his daughter at the same time. He's a Russia because he had a relationship with his mother, so the, the Gemara calls him a Russia. The question really is, why is he a Russia? All this is Beshoigi. We're talking about a person bringing Chatois. He brought a Chatois because he did a Beshoigi, so why is he a Russia? Some sort of Russia. He shouldn't have, uh, it doesn't happen to regular people, these, these, these mistakes. So a guy that's Michal Shabbos Beshoigi is a Russia. I don't know exactly. Yeah. Now, they had from that union, they had a guy called Nimrod. Who's the Russia, the son of Russia? Because he had, how did he have it? He had it with his own sister daughter. Now he, now the, he's the player. Nimrod is the player. He went and he went with his aunt. So now she is. She's a choisimoy. His mother is Rachel and Leah is Rachel's sister. She's a choisoy because Alifaz and a choisaviv because. No, a choisaviv. No, a choisaviv. Fakir, you guys jump. Alifaz is a choisaviv, right? She's a choisoy. Why is she a choisoy? Why is she Nimrod's sister? Because Alifaz, again. Alifaz is his father, and it's also Leah's father. Alifaz is his father, and and then and, uh, and Leah's father. So they're sisters. He, it's Nim, Leah's his sister, and it's also his father's sister. And also his mother's sister. All three right over here. Why is his mother's sister? Because Alifaz is the father. Alifaz was his was his mother's father also. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, that's the the final case t- for all these things. That we're done with the Yavamas for now. All right. So let's see it inside. Uh, this this uh, this Alifaz guy, Baalimoy, Vahilish Te Banois, he had two daughters, Rachalai. Vikhazu Baal Achasmem, then he had a relationship with one of them, Vahilid Ben. Uba binoi ala chois imoi. Shia chois a choisoi, shia chois oviv, the havele, rishia by rishia. Torah bon. Baalea, if a person was with a woman Bishagig. He's done five minutes later again. How many times is he chayev? It was with one awareness. What awareness? Different ma'isim. And that's what we're going to be discussing. And this could apply also to Shabbos, let's say. A guy did Ktsira, and then ten minutes later did Ktsira again. Is it the same thing? Is it not the same thing? That's what we're going to discuss now. Hello, Mechad. Separate ma'isim. Similar ma'isim. Different women. One woman. Baal Leo, the same person, Vachazur Baal Leo, Vachazur Baal Leo, in one helm, Chayva Kol Achas, Vachas, Dibri Rabbi Lezer. Rabbi Lezer says, Yechayv on every single Maisa. Vachacham, Moi, Rabbi Menu, Chayv El Achas. Umoi, Dimchacham, Rabbi Lezer, Bibo, Al Chomish, Noshav Nidois. Vivas Achas. How does a person have beer with five women in one shot? He doesn't. It's a helm, Achas. One helm. Shu Chayv Akol Achas, Vachas. He's Chayv on each and every one. But in, on one woman, but different times, he's only chayiv one, one card. Hoyol vugaram lens. So now the gemara comes up with a svar that the gemara is going to be doicha. If you cause somebody else to bring a carbon, then that act should cause you to bring a carbon. You're on the other side of it. So every time you cause one woman to bring a carbon, you cause five women to bring a carbon. Now you have to bring five carbonas. We don't say such a svara. A husband and a wife, she had an awareness in between every single time. So how many carbonas does she have to bring? Five for each awareness. But he, since he only had one awareness, then he's only chayev one. So you see that his goyrem doesn't cause him to bring a carbon. He just caused the woman to bring five carbonas, yet he's stuck with one. There's an interesting rash here, could I to, to look inside for a second, just interesting. Not so much for the pshat, but for the gishmakai. He says, Rashi de Mermaz, Guhu behel amachas, vi bechamesh alamis. There's two girsois in the Gemara. The Gemara had a girsa here that it was five women, and each woman he was over five times. Says Rashi, U be'er ve'achas mayri. I have a different girsa. It was once, Loshen ikiyahu. It's, it's a better to say it like this. It's a nice, clean Loshen. V'yashar koychoy. Fine. Elo ein mahoyol ve'gufim muchlakim. 
So the reason is not, the reason why he's Chayev five is not because he was Gurim them to, to, to his five needle wives to bring a carbon, just because there were five separate women. On five separate Gufim, you Chayev five Karbanos. But in one Guf, you Chayev one. What? Yashir Kaifa is an abbreviation, I can see, for the first time. What does it stand for? Yashir? No. To me, it means it's not an abbreviation. It's in an abbreviation. Yashir Kaifa means it's a. Chilach Lairaisa. Kaifa should be strong. You should have. What? I know, I know what he's talking about. I see that. Mine also has it. I don't know. I don't think it's an abbreviation. But we could look. We could look. Yibailu. So, do, do we apply this halacha to Shabbos? Kotzer to Kotzer Mali. Amar Rebbe Lezer. Rebbe Lezer says that each act, you have another carbon. So, a person is in his field, and every two minutes he takes a break, and he cuts the weed again. He's have another carbon for every single time, all Shabbos long. He has to bring a hundred carbonas. Time in the Rebbe Lezer, Hazem Shum Duhu Ovad Tartin. Mbam to Lahachi. So, maybe because over there by the women, he did two maizim. So, over here he did two maizim, and let's bring it to over here. Omer Chai Vakalachas Vachas. We should say by in our case he's chayiv too. Over there, it's very logical. Each bia is a separate act. You can't combine different bias. Each one is something else. But by cutting wheat, you could cut as much wheat as you want in one shot. It happens to be he took a break. By bias, each one is an individual act. Since he could possibly, could you, could you be ma'ar with two beers? No, because then it's one beer. You can't mix two beers. If, if it's one long beer, it's one long beer. <laughs> it, it, essentially, it's two separate acts. But by cutting, it doesn't have to be two separate acts. It can be one long act. You took your thing, you just cut all day in one swoop thing. So maybe you have one. Even the extra life, since he could, Maybe in, in Shabbos it's Chayv 1. My. So in fact, it's such a beautiful Svarah that we have a Mandoma that says that's a great Svarah. But we also have a Mandoma that says the first one is a good Svarah. It doesn't matter. He did two acts, two acts. I don't care if he could combine them or not combine them. Two acts is two acts. Chayv 2 Korban is in Shabbos. It's tough over there that the two acts you bring two korbanos because you can't mix those two acts. Eisvei abay le rabba. Rebbelezer mechayev al vladei melachas b'mokam obis melachas. Rebbelezer says that if a person does a vlad melacha together with an av melacha, you chayev two. It seems like ha av av vasachas potter. Since he only talks about a av and a tolda, it's much that that's the only time you chayev two. But if you do the same thing ktsira ktsira, you potter. We have a time. We're going to see in a second example of an av and a tolda. How come in two of his malachas, as the Gemara, like we just discussed, two ktsiris, which are avalacha, we just said according to Rebbe is chayv. Over there it seems he potter. Over my brother, the Ravino, the Ravno, I know the Ravno, Chumi, by Zachary Targino, we said a pshat. How come I is ginon, by the Avin and Toldo, with the Bedolis Hamudles, Agabetaino, Ksasim Vasachas? You have two branches, one belongs to a, a vine of a grape, and there's no grapes on it. So he's cutting it for firewood. Cutting for firewood is not a it's a, it's a not a av, it's a tolda. Because cutting for fruit is a dav. Cutting for firewood is a tolda. But there was attached to it was another branch from a fig tree, teina. And that he cut for the food. So he has an av and a tolda with vasachas. Uktsasim vasachas. Over there, in that case, it's an av and a tolda, it's different shamas, and it's different bodies, different branches. So, what would be a similar case? What's the case? If I, if I reap two gregors, that's the shear on Shabbos that you have, in one shot, then. You potter, why? Because you don't have shame with Mukhlakim, you don't have Gufa Mukhlakim. It's the same shame called Ktsira, and it's the same type of food. Avakotsa Kigur Geras. Vikotsa Kigur Geras, in that case, according to Rabbi Eliezer only, you be chayev to. Voi Chalon Rabbi Kiva. Aver Amadullah Bibahimam out. Givaldik, you have a dangling limb. Now, let's set this up. If a limb is completely removed from a human being, what is that called? Aver Minachai. What? What, what is it? It's Tommy just like a, a dead person. It's a dead person. 
So it's tummy mitame ba'ayo b'maga the whole thing. If it's attached even by a string, it's not detached. It's part of the human. So there's no tumah at all. So the question is. Oh, so the qu- I'm just setting it up by a human. We're talking about both, but the question is on a, on a behema. What's the halacha if it dangles by an animal? We don't know. We know for a fact that a person, a human being, which is much stronger than an animal, has more tumma. Tumas mace is much worse than a tumas nevela. Right? So again, one step that I forgot to tell you. If it's completely detached by an animal, what is it? It's an Eber Menachai of an animal, and it's Metama Benevela. It's less of a Tumah than an Adam, but it's still Metama. Now, Noam, you should just, uh, yeah. Do not imagine this in your head, as we did before, the whole Amit before, no imagination here. If a person is a Mukesh it's a very disturbing case. He has dangling limbs. He has an issue. Yontav is coming up, his mishpach is showing up. It's not, it's not so gishmak to have dangling limbs. So what does he do? He goes to the surgeon and he removes his dangling limb. Now, the surgeon has to bring a carbon Pesach. So the surgeon doesn't want to touch his dangling limb. Because if he removes it and just holds it and puts it in a box, waiting for the Chavikadish, he became tummy, he can't bring a carbon Pesach. Not only that, the guy himself as it's coming off his, uh, let's say his arm, as it's coming off, it might touch, as it's completely removed, it might touch part of his arm, and then he becomes Tommy in, re- in return. What's the idea? The surgeon cuts it completely off and leaves him a little string. Then he's a very nice guy, he shoves it into some sort of nail on the wall and tells him, yank as hard as you can, as quick as you can, and run. So then now, right, like your tooth. <laughs> so now the, 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 the limb remains here, his body's over here, it never touched his body, the surgeon never touched it, and everybody's kosher vitar. It's, it's pretty disturbing, this thing. The <laughs> he, 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 he puts his dangling limb in some sort of hook, and he, and he, and he, and he tugs it. <laughs> and certainly Rabbi Sai by a Behema, because our Adam says Rashi is mitam his own goof when he's alive. Yeah. I could become tummy. I could touch a mason. I become tummy. An animal never become, becomes tummy. So susceptibility to tum is much stronger by human. So meila, I could learn to have a chaymer too. A behema. No, I just stuck that in as uh, this. But he said, I'm, 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 what Rashi says here is because. Shemitam um, mechaim, shemikabel tum mechaim says Rashi. Yeah, yeah. The spike he brings up a good point. Reb a spike has to be mechuber uh, and no, well, really, uh, whatever. Time. Not awesome. Hamoychik is a kreisha. So now we're going to be just discussing this concept of what? We're discussing. We had this before. As something separates, does it touch what it's separated from? So we had a kresha is a leak. The leak has water. We all know the whole concept of chiyutan, that in order for food to become tome, it has to be mukshul it has to have it has to be wet from water that you want it to, to, to be there. You like the water, you want the water. Now <coughs> also mamochik is a kresha. If somebody squeezes out a leak, vasochik besari uksusoi, machlok is rashing tastes exactly where the water came from. Rain or, rain or from within inside, but Akaponim also in the Soichet Besaroi, he had water there. If he was just took a shower, Tosis asked a question, he took a shower, he wanted the water. What's the problem? Once he wanted the water, some people explain Rashi because he once he took a shower and it's in his hair, then it becomes no chash, bottle or something like that. They don't have a chashivos, the water inside when, when they're still inside. Once they come out, he wants it out, so he wants it, so it, it becomes The leak, as the water comes out, becomes Why? Why? I just squeeze the water out, so you have to say, the Pshat is my time, as it's squeezed out, it dripped over the leak, and then it came out. In other words, if you know for a fact, it squirted out powerfully, like this guy's limb off the wall, 
then it wouldn't be an issue. Then it's not Mushal Kabatuba, then the leak itself never touched water. If you if you could see it microscopically, a hole opens up and poof, water sprays out and never touched the leak, then it never is Mushal Kabatuba. What do we do with our Mishnah of Aslan every Pesach, Choyloch, Loyetza, Roifei? And the whole thing, Biyamish Bishas, Prishasim, Hushar. Why, does it, why can't a doctor do it? Why can't the doctor yank it off? At least for the Mukashkin himself. How come the Mukish, we're worried about the Mukashkin becoming Tamay? As the Aver is coming off, the Mukashkin, the Mukashkin should become Tamay. Why do we say the Mukashkin could be Makriv a carbon? Says the Gemara, the Amar of Yosef, He yanked it with all his force. In other words, it never had a chance to touch his body. So too by the leak, if it comes off quickly, I'm sorry, so by the human, in our Mishnah, Rav Yosef said that the, the, the halachas we're going to see in a second somewhere else. So by Pesach, by, uh, by Mukashchin, it came off the Kol Koychon. Be'chid, Mother Rav Yosef, Ahod is Zov, Utmei Meis, a similar case. We have a Zov, or Utmei Meis. Shoyim ha'achim yodim aleik shomim. Av ha'pish esoychtin, even though they're squeezing out their clothing, Right, so picture this, you take a, a cloth and you start squeezing. What happens? The water in the cloth comes out of the cloth and drips downwards. Now the water is no longer in the cloth, because the water in the cloth, we said, has no chashivas. Once it comes out, it has a chashivas. Over here, the Gemara is going to say no. But since it's coming down the cloth itself, it's going to be reabsorbed into the cloth on the bottom part of it, on the bottom of the cloth. So maybe even though it came out, it's about to go back in, it never had a chashivas. We only consider something water that's chashev if it came out completely. What happened was the water that came out forcefully and never touched the clothing, then that's not machshir the clothing, but if it came out and dripped over it, it is. Same thing by a, a by a aver, same thing by a leak. If it came out forcefully, it's not machshir. If, if it dripped out, it's machshir. Void shalon, void Kiva. Rebbe Kiva asked his friends, Rebbe Gamliel, Rebbe Shua, another question. Now we just learned that if a person is bought al chomish noshav nidos, five separate women that are five nidos, how many kavanos do they have to bring? Five. That's by human beings. They're considered gufa muchlakim. Does that halacha apply also? What about five animals outside the Bisa Midosh? They're supposed to be shechted inside the Bisa Midosh. You brought them outside. Could he get away with one carbon? We never heard it specifically. All of a sudden, says Amr Yishua, we had it the other day. You take one carbon right before Zrika. Why is it important to say this before Zrika? Because before Zrika, you over on Meila. Once you do Zrika, it's already owned by the Kohanim, there's no Meila. So he took one carbon and made a chant out of it, then he made a kugel, and then he made something else. So the different foods. Over here, I have a Kasha Rabbi Schomburg who told me that the Pshat is it's different types of food. One is liquidy and one is. Strong, like my picture of a kugel and chong. But over here it's five. Okay. Fine. No caches. Until we learn tomorrow's done. If from one animal I can create five foods, that's mechayev me and five meilas, so certainly five separate animals, gufa mukhulak and mamish. I should be over five times. Or Rabbi Shimon Loikach Shailon Rabbi Kiva. That wasn't the question. The Gemara is going to explain why not. I have something much similar that we're talking about food that's similar to five tamchuim. That's also food. How do you have five foods? Five noisers. He made five foods out of one carbon. And the Gemara is going to explain. If you heard this first from your Rebbe, I could accept it. In Ladin Yeshuvah, but if you bring a Kavah Choymer from Meila, I have a Pircha. Amar Loi Hashem, no, go ahead, let me see what you got. Amar Loi, Loi Amarta Be Meila, Shosabah Samachal Koicha Besamehanekin Ahena. Amazing halachas. 
that by Mi'ila, the person feeding the other person, all over the Torah, ain't shleich l'devar Avera. Don't eat. I'm giving you nevela. You shouldn't eat it. If you eat nevela, the Avera is on you. But by Mi'ila, if I give you Mi'ila, the Avera is on me. Also. Yeah, also. And now also another amazing halacha, Tzayraf es ha-mi'ila l'zman meruba. If a person is moil from Beis HaMikdash, a half a pruta, and 22 years later he goes and he's nehen again a half a pruta, there's no statute of limitations. It's, it, it's, mech, it's mechaber the half and a half. However, by, by, uh, by Achila Asura, what's the shear? What's the shear? Very good. Kedei Achila's pras. That's five minutes. That's all you have to. That's all you have in order to be mechaber the two achilas. Says the Gemara What was the What was the discussion? What was the back and forth when we brought a raya from Meila to Shechita? How can I bring a raya from somebody that enjoys himself five times chuyim? That's why he's chayiv five korbanos. So that's why he changed the Shechita into noisar because noisar is something you eat, and I can't have this excuse that. He had a no, because Noisir he also had a no. Chayav gal achas v'achas zoy achas akula. Or meloy loy shamanu. Or Yeshua shamati boichel mizav echel mechamishu tamchui mel machas. I do have a good raya from tamchui. Shochayav gal achas v'achas meshum meilo. Rani shadron kav chaymer. Oh, so now the Gemara explains what's the kav chaymer. Ma mizav echel chengu from uchlokim. He made five tafshilim from one behema. He's chayav five. Chayav gal achas v'achas meshum tamchui uchlokim. Chamishu zvachim the guf from uchlokim. So five different animals in Kolchkin. Or Rabbi Shimon Loikach Shal and Alba Oichel Noisim Chamisha Zvachim Bela Machas Mau Chayva Kolachas Kulum. Oh no no. So you skip this. You skip this because that's a repetition here. Or Loikach Shal and Alba Oichel Noisim Chamisha Zvachim Bela Machas Mau Chayva Kolachas Kulum. Oh no no. So you skip this because that's a repetition here. Or Loikach Shal and Alba Oichel Noisim Chamisha Zvachim Bela Machas Mau Chayva Kolachas Kulum. Oh no no. So you skip this because that's a repetition here. Or Loikach Shal and Alba Oichel Noisim Chamisha Zvachim Bela Machas Mau Chayva Kolachas Kulum. Oh no no. So you skip this because that's a repetition here. Or Loikach Shal and Alba Oichel Noisim Chamisha Zvachim Bela Machas Mau Chayva Kolachas Kulum. Oh no no. So you skip this because that's a repetition Let's read it, and tomorrow we'll just say about pet. So at least we have one minute in. All right, Rekiva, my lochan kabel. If you heard it from your Rebbe, I'll accept it. If you just made it up yourself, I could slug it up. Kibla Yisrael hotshuva Rebbe Rekiva loy. What happened? Toshma desanya ocha chomish chatichos noisim mezevach echad behelam echad achas bchamishet amchuyim. If he ate five pieces of noisar from one animal, but it was in five different types of food, and he may be a lok chatos achas. He's chayv only one carb. And if he wasn't sure if he ate from the zevach or maybe from a kosher animal that he's allowed to eat, he probably should have had a suffix. And it may be a lo So then he brings one ashim tali. Echad. But if he had five awarenesses, maybe chatos akolachas va'achas. Then he brings a carbon for each and every one. Maybe ashim tali akolachas va'achas. Mechamish zvachim behelem achas. Chayv akolachas va'achas. If he brought from five zvachim in one awareness, he's chayav on each and every one. Not one carbon, from five different carbonas. Rezbi Yudaymer, Afilo ocha chomesh chatichos mechamisha zvachim elam achas, and it may be elam achas. So another man comes along and says, five separate animals, you only chayav one. Vas fekon, and it may be elam achas, and therefore on a suffix you only bring one. Klosh adover, kosh chalukim bechatois, chalukim bashamois. Fine, let's stop here. We'll have to repeat it anyways. Have a wonderful day. Tomorrow at regular time, 7.30.